All right, guys, so we have the case on its side. Now we're installing the standalone post. As you can see, we've already put those in here according to how the motherboard is gonna fit. Um, so now, let's look, look at the motherboard. Here was the MSI Z87 G45 Gaming motherboard. As you can see, it's red. Kind of what I was talking about earlier with the whole theme, red, be kind of cool. Let's go ahead and seat this in. We've already put the IO shield in. So now we're going to set the board. Okay, we're just about there. All right, now we will go ahead and tighten things down. When you're doing the tightening down, you guys wanna make sure that you do it in a cross angle, so that way you're not putting unnecessary pressure on the board. It's important to remember too that you're not monkey tighten these down, as there's really no need for that. If you start really tightening these down, you guys can stand a really good chance of cracking your board. And nobody wants to crack their new expensive motherboard. Just snug everything up. Not too tight, but just enough snug to it. Alright, so there we go. Motherboard's installed, guys. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is install the CPU in the computer. On the motherboard, you'll see where the socket is. You have to pull this lever out first. It takes a little bit of power, but you just push it down, kind of pull it out, and it's up. You're gonna pull the lever back, and that's gonna reveal the socket. A little stubborn today. Very important to say, do not touch the inside. Do not come anywhere near it. This is one of the things where if you were to screw something up on the inside, that board is trash. So again, do not touch the inside. What you will notice though about that socket right there, you will see that there is a little arrow right there. That arrow is very important because you'll see why in a second. If you look on the actual chip itself, there's an arrow right there. Let's crack this bad boy open a little bit. You'll see there's an arrow right there. When you go to put this in, you make sure to line the arrows up just like that. That's how the pins are supposed to be addressed. It's very important that that's paid attention to because you'll do some severe damage to it unless you do it exactly the way that it's supposed to be. And don't touch the bottom part. The oils from your hands can fuck it up. Once you drop it in, you wanna do a little quick movement to make sure that it's nice and snug. Once that's done, you want to bring the shield back down, just like that. Make sure it hits the grounding screw, the anchor screw. You want to take the lever arm, forcefully bring it down, and tuck it underneath. Processors are now set. Now, on all these Intel, here is your cooler. The Intel ones stock are terrible, they're junk. But since I don't have the water cooling kit yet, we're going to make do. Um, you'll see that there comes a thermal paste on the bottom. The thermal paste that's here, it's terrible. So, give me a couple minutes, guys. I'm going to scrape this off, clean it up, and put my own thermal paste on. All right, so we took the stock cooler for the processor, cleaned off the old thermal paste, and now we're going to be setting this on top of the chip itself. But before we do that, take a little Arctic Silver, and we're going to put it right on top of the chip itself. You want to do it about pea size. So we're going to go right in the center. There we go. That's all you need. Don't need that much. You take it and you want to set it. See there's already four holes right there. They just go right in. You want to push them in until they click and then you want to turn it counterclockwise 
to lock them in place. Go each go corners again, like we said earlier. You'll hear a little click. You see that little click? You just turn. Locks the things into place. Okay. Twist, push, twist. All right, guys, next step we're gonna do in the process, we're gonna actually gonna install the RAM. We've got the Corsair Vengeance that we're getting ready to pop in. Got two eight gig sticks that we're getting ready to pop in there. We're gonna be throwing these in slots one and three. When you're putting it in, you make sure you pay attention to the slots, which match up perfectly with the board. They go right in the slots. You put even pressure on both sides until it clicks, just like that. Okay, we got one in, and let's stick the second stick in. And we're going into three. Okay, even pressure, and they snap right into place. That's the ram, guys. All right, guys, next step that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to install graphics cards. It's the fun stuff, right? It's what everybody loves. So we're going to take out the expansion slot here for number two. And since this card is a dual channel expansion, we got to pull out number three as well. And since we're running an SLI, we need to pull out the other one as well. But first things first, let's set the first card in. This is the one for my last PC. This is going to be the main drive. You need to make sure that when you're doing it, the PCI Express lines up perfectly with the PCI Express as well. And you just take it, firm pressure, and it sits right in there like a glove. Alright. So the next one that we're going to be doing, we're going to be installing the next card. That's going in number five and number six. Guys, give me a hot second here. Let me open up this other card. And just like the other one, you want to make sure that you get the card lined up in the slot. As soon as you get it lined up, apply pressure and it snaps right into place, just like that. And that will be the hard part, if you will, of the card install. Alright, next step, we're going to go ahead and install the SSD drive. Since this one is uh, only a two and a half, it's got to go in the top drive. This case comes specifically built for that. So, take your SSD, make sure that the SATA hookups are on the back. Stick it in the slots, line the holes up, and it's time to run some screws. And the great thing about this case is once you get the drive set inside the bay here, you literally take it, make sure you drop it back in the same slot, drop it in, put the handle down, click, it's done. All right, go ahead. And so I went ahead and installed the storage drive. That's already in, but I'll show it to you guys anyway. That goes in, these little push buttons lock it in. It goes right back in the drive, just like that, nice and easy. And lock her back in. So I went ahead and installed the storage drive. That's already in, but I'll show it to you guys anyway. That goes in, these little push buttons lock it in. It goes right back in the drive, just like that, nice and easy. And Lock her back in. 
All right, next we're gonna do the optical drive, the CD-ROM. So like this board, this case, you just squeeze the sides and the case comes right off. You take your drive and you stick it in. Should go all the way in, no problems. And if you come around here, one of the cool things about this board is it's got a lock system instead of screwing stuff in. Click it once and you'll see the drive is locked into place. How neat is that? Uh, then you wanna make sure you take your SATA cable Plug your SATA cable in, boom. Cable management come through the rubber grommets, come back out the back side, through here, and you plug right into your SATA 6.0s in the back. Optical drive, done. All right guys, so the next step, we're actually going to install the second fan inside of the case, because it only came with one. So, we went ahead and removed the top. And what did we find out? Well, come to find out that the fan from Coolmaster that they gave us came with these screws that were literally that big. Can you see that? How are they gonna fit in here? It doesn't work. You need a tweaker to get all the way inside of it, but you can't get enough of a torque on the tweaker to turn them into the threads. So we went ahead and pulled the fan that was in the back out, replaced it in the front because we have the screws, and now we're going to put the other fan that we have on the back side, right here. So, let us screw this down and we'll be right back with you guys. Alright, so I decided to go ahead and skip the boring part of watching me plug everything in with the power supply. So, I went ahead and skipped to the final version of this PC. As you guys can see, everything is done. It's running right now. Let's take a little bit closer look. There's the processor, the fans, you can see the second fan that I installed, the RAM, you can see all the power being plugged in, you'll see that there is one obnoxious cord right there, that's the board power, there's no quicker way to get to that or more efficient way to get to that unfortunately, so it's going to have to live there. I'm going to have to work that around though when the, power, the water cooling kit comes in. As we move on down, the graphics cards, everything's plugged into the board, power supply, plugged into the fan power and as we come up here you guys can see everything's plugged in there and got a nice little LED in the front so there is the PC guys so you guys got to see the build of the computer you guys got to see the insides of the computer and so I want to take a little minute to recap the entire process and recap a couple things about the actual build itself um, that was my third build I think overall it went pretty well I had a buddy of mine who was very inexperienced doing the camera work um, but he got to learn a lot from watching me build and helping out with that so overall that went really well I'm um, really enjoying the system a lot right now everything's going very well with it um, so I want to give you guys a look at the Windows experience so let's take a look at that so right now the SSD drive which is the primary the transfer rate to 7.9 which is the highest uh, graphics 7.9 on the SLI the RAM is a 7.8 it's 0.1 off the max because I'm running at 1600 megahertz on the RAM as opposed to anything higher than that chose not to go that route save a little bit of money and the processor is at a 7.6 um, it's a little bit 0.3 off of the 7.9 max due to it being a 3.4 stock and it's an i5 not an i7 um, once I get the water cooling system installed I'll be able to overclock it to 4.4 .4, which is my goal um, and that will bypass 7.9 on the performance with no problems. Um, so there is the Windows Experience part of it. And while we got you guys here, let's take a look. And if you can do me a favor, subscribe to my YouTube channel. You guys can see the link right here, KDOGG1222 with an extra 2 on the end. Um, you can also look up Paper Tanks and find it that way. Don't forget to follow on Twitter. Twitter name is Paper Tanks. Like us on Facebook look up paper tanks I do all the giveaways and most of my stuff that I communicate with you guys is through here I ask you guys what you want to do for play with viewer night on the twitch TV channel so there's all that information and don't forget to follow the twitch channel as well uh, that's twitch.tv slash paper tanks um, currently Amber is streaming on my account for me so she's having a little fun here um, but yeah we do a lot of live streaming as well of YouTube videos so until next time, guys, 
Thank you very much for watching the video. Greatly appreciate the support, and I uh, look forward to seeing you guys. Thanks a lot.